quick. I talked for way too long, so I'm just splitting this video up into two videos. This one is obviously up right now, and then the second half of it will be up um, tomorrow morning to the normal video. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today is the third and final part of the 30 Day Simplify My Life, Simplify Your Life challenge video. So, well, video series, I guess. If you haven't seen the first two videos, this trilogy or series, three part video, is inspired by Mel B's challenge on her YouTube channel and blog. And I'll link her down below and in the cards and also at the end of this video. But basically she came up with a 30 day challenge to declutter your physical space and declutter your mental space. So today's video is all about the mental decluttering, which is the last 15 days of the challenge. Let's just get straight into it. Day 16, which is the day we're starting with for this video, <laughs> was find a place for everything. So with everything that you've got left, you've got to look through all of everywhere and make sure everything has like an assigned spot to go back to every single time you use it. So you don't have something that you pick up and then you leave it somewhere else. It's got its assigned spot and it always goes back there so you know that's where it goes. And you gotta like account for your laziness because although you might have like a super organized filing system or something like that, if at one point you're feeling lazy and you really don't want to put your stuff away in that order, it's just gonna completely mess it up and it's gonna come, become messy again. So find a way to organize and place things in places that work easiest for you. So me, I've got my makeup vanity and sure I can store things in my drawer and like in my, cause my vanity folds up and there's like sections underneath. I could have my stuff under there, but to make it easier for myself, I've got my brushes in like a little divider thing and my makeup that I use every day in shelves. And that really helps for me to keep my vanity clean. And all I've got on there is like, my brushes and my everyday makeup and then it's clean it's not like all my makeup just everywhere on my vanity I've always put it back in like the spot that it belongs and that's the same with like if you've got your desk and it'd be good to have like a little jar filled with your pens because you know you're gonna use them every day and if you had to put them back in the drawer then you probably wouldn't do that you just leave it on the desk and that just creates like a, a busy space also when you're Putting stuff everywhere, make sure it's as simple as possible because you don't want to just have like 20 different jars on like your desk or something like that. So just keep it as simple as possible and only the stuff that you necessarily need like on a daily basis to be at. Shell's next tip for pretty much everything is store vertically. So store your books vertically, store your clothes vertically, makeup palettes, anything like that. I can truly say folding my clothes vertically has changed how tidy my closet is. I used to have like everything on top of each other like that and it would get so messy so quickly and I wouldn't be able to find stuff because everything would just be shoved in and it would never work but folding vertically has changed my life. <laughs> everything, I can see everything that I have, everything, nothing ever goes messy because I always put it back in the vertically and my my skirts are folded then my shorts and my workout pants like oh, I didn't actually realize how much it would affect how clean my wardrobe would be but it has made my life so much easier and everything I just feel you know sometimes when you when your like room gets to the point of messy when you just can't be bothered anymore that was how my closet always was so I was always like oh I can't be bothered to put stuff away so everything always went on the floor and had folding vertically my my closet is always clean it's amazing <laughs> and you've got to throw everything quick clean and then discard and donate everything that you haven't done so day 17 is find out what lights you up so first of all you're gonna brainstorm what makes you happy and then get specific about it and then start logging like a daily thing of what makes you happy I brainstormed and this is like this is a couple of things on my list I said being around my good friends 
nice smelling candles. Coffee on a cold day, watching the sunrise, that's when there's like no clouds and you can just see the, or even when there is clouds sometimes and you just see like the pinks, if there is pinks or even just like the light shining through. Cause I feel like sunrises are more special than sunsets cause not everyone's awake for the sunrise. And then learning new things because just knowledge is power. And also cuddles, because who doesn't love getting cuddles except for when it's hot. That's true, but like just cuddles in general. Even if it's just, I mean, the only cuddles that I get is from my mum, my dad, and my cat. But hey, I'm not complaining, they're all good cuddles. And also, I started taking notes of what makes me happy on my Google Keep app. Day 18 is deciding what you do and don't care about. You've got to make a big list of every single thing that you haven't made a decision on and whether to care about it. On Michelle's blog post or um, YouTube video on this day, about this day, there's a massive prompting list and that definitely helped me remember or just like think of the different things that I like been subconsciously thinking about. You've written down everything in your list, decide what you do care about and decide what you don't care about. This is my list. But yeah, I write everything down that I could think of from those lists and then I just cross stuff out that I'm just like, ah, oh, I don't really need to care about that. That's just something that's just like been like a small thing, but it's been hindering in my mind for a long period of time. And yeah, so the things that I did leave on there was um, I want to start watching Riverdale. I have started that. I am very much enjoying it, although I'm a couple of episodes behind at the moment because I just want like a couple in a row. So I want to go to all the music festivals, all of them. All those Splendor tickets sold out so fast and I'm so upset about it. I want to widen my music taste, watch more cult favourite movies and drink more water. Those are just a couple of the things that are left on here. It was good to write the stuff down and just pull it out of my mind and then get rid of it or just like be like, yeah, I do care about this and then put it back in. <laughs> right, so day 19 was decide where to put your money. Firstly, you've got to look at, well, the easiest way to do this and to like see where most of your money is going is to look at your bank transactions for the past four weeks. Highlight what may made you happy in green. Highlight what purchases were necessary in orange. And then highlight or like underline or cross, like put a line through. What purchases you either don't remember or brought no value to your life. So for me, I just printed this out and most of my purchases for the past month were either like for my car, groceries or presents for other people, which I was very happy and fine to buy presents for other people. I found that in the past four weeks on like five separate occasions, which I guess isn't that much, but still it added up to like $40 or something. I'd I'd bought something at uni, like food or coffee or something. And it's just like I could have avoided spending that money by like bringing food from home, which there's definitely always enough food at home for me to grab to go. I just always am rushing because I like procrastinate too much. And that shows me that I shouldn't be spending that much at uni just for food. I can bring things from home which would benefit me so much more. I'd save money and I'd be using up the food that my family buys. The next step is to decide where I want my money to be spent. Where I want my money to be spent is towards purchases that either make me happy or give me a benefit in life or I want to be saving it for travel and I'm hoping to do exchange next year for uni. So there's that. So that's where I want my money to be spent and where I don't want my money to be spent is towards unnecessary like food purchases or unnecessary purchases in general like clothes that I don't necessarily need and stuff like that. Next step is to design a loose budget around where you want your money to go. So for me, it's kind of a monthly thing but I've got mm, some of my money going to petrol, some of my money going to like outings because I thought I should allow myself to have have some money for 
going out for drinks or going for coffee or something like that. And then the rest of my money would be going to savings. So that's my sort of loose budget. I feel like I'm squinting because it's really bright outside even though my curtains are only like a little bit open. It's a really hot day today. Why is it hot? It's like the middle of... Well, what is it called? It's the middle of autumn. Oh! Or fall. It's the middle of fall. Day 20 is evaluate your commitments. The first step is to write down a rough daily or weekly routine. So this is mine. It's really basic sort of stuff but there that's basically all of my weekly commitments that's the only thing I do every single week I'm sure a bunch of other people would have like every Saturday they go for coffee with their one of their old friends you get your nails done every week your eyelashes eyebrows tinted once a month or something like that that sort of stuff so you got to write all that stuff down, you evaluate all your commitments and cull whichever ones aren't bringing any value to your life. So basically all of the weekly commitments that I have are just university, going to the gym and hockey. So I mean, they all bring value to my life and I all enjoy them or like I have to do them. The next step is to integrate more of the stuff that makes you happy so take some of the stuff that from that you found from day 17 and integrate it into your everyday life so for me i wanted to integrate more of being outside and being in nature more so that's something i can do more like right now i probably should be outside because <laughs> it's a very nice day maybe just having breakfast outside or just going for a walk on the beach day 21 is identify your negative beliefs so this is sort of a heavy day. So step one is to identify a negative belief. Then you've got to determine what led to the existence of this negative belief. Determine what your brain gains from that negative belief. Because it might be you gain comfort or you won't get disappointed. And you've got to poke holes in your beliefs. Brainstorm different reasons for the negative situations to be happening. You've got to create evidence to support the opposite of your negative belief. One of the ones for me was that I can't wear tight clothing because I'll look bad and it will show off my stomach because I don't have a flat stomach. And that started when I was about 14 or 13, 13, 14, when I like had, I wasn't ever like super insecure with myself, but it was especially my stomach and my legs. But um, yeah, I thought my stom stomach stuck out and I would never wear any tight clothing even though um, my mum, of course she would tell me I look beautiful but like she'd say, no you look fine and I think only, I think ever since then, oh I don't even actually think ever, I'd look, probably when I was little but I've never had like a super tight dress, the tightest one is like it gets tight to about my belly button and then it just like flows out so I've never had any Super, uh, my, my formal dress, my formal dress was tight. When I was young I had like bad self image around like my stomach area. But thankfully I've started to get like over this negative belief more and I'm starting to like break through it and I'm not believing it more as such so I guess I'm already like further along the track than most people would be with their negative beliefs. That's sort of my experience with one of my neg negative beliefs. Day 22 is to show gratitude. Step one is to brainstorm 25 things that you're grateful for. I'm gonna see the list of um, all the things that I wrote down for like being grateful for. That will be on my blog. I just wrote down all the things that came to me and writing all that stuff down, it's like, like showed me like, whoa, I, I am grateful for a lot of things and I should be grateful more often. Hello. Step two is to write down three ways that you can practice gratitude in your daily life. For me, the only thing I think I'm going to do is just do like self-talk gratitude, just to remind myself of there's so much to be grateful for. And when I'm in the moment that I ask myself that, be like, what am I grateful for at this very moment? Or what am I grateful for today? And I think just doing that will help me be, become like a more positive person. So, and it's like the mindset and the person that I want to become super positive person. 
which I'd like to say that's me at the moment, but like, I want to be even more positive. <laughs> so if you enjoyed watching this video, um, give it a thumbs up. And also I'm going to be making more like mindfulness and not so much minimalist videos, but um, mindfulness is more like the direction. Um, that sort of video is going up on Tuesdays and then I'll have beauty videos going up on Saturdays or Sundays. I'm not keeping myself to a strict schedule with uni. And for those videos then I'd love for you to subscribe. Alright, thank you so much for watching. Bye!